The unprecedented action of a federal indictment of a former president of the United States, I think, would be would be extraordinarily divisive in our country, and I, I think it would send a terrible message uh, to the wider world. But again, let me be very clear. No one's above the law. And if the Department of Justice chooses to move forward with an indictment, uh, I, I would hope that it would meet the very high threshold for the unprecedented action of a federal indictment against a former president of the United States. In so many ways, it's been a consequential week for these former running mates, Donald Trump and Mike Pence, with Pence launching his campaign in Iowa and at least in some ways taking on his former boss a bit more directly than he has in the past. Zach Fisher was at Pence's campaign launch in Iowa. That's why today, before God and my family, I'm announcing that I'm running for president of the United States of America. What's been assumed for months is now known. Former Vice President Mike Pence joining the crowded race for the Republican nomination with his former boss. And for President Trump, Pence sparing no words about his actions on January 6th. My former running mate continues to insist that I had the right to overturn the election. But President Trump was wrong then. And he's wrong now. Pence also going after President Biden and his administration, saying that this election is the turning point. So the first step to turning America around is ending this disastrous presidency. So here in Iowa, we must resolve that Joe Biden will never be reelected as president of the United States. The former vice president says his campaign will be the fiercest protector of the unborn. As your president, I will always stand for the sanctity of life, and I will not rest, and I will not relent until we restore the sanctity of life to the center of American law in every state in the land. Zach Fisher reporting there from Iowa, where Pence was joined this week by his brother, Congressman Greg Pence, and Indiana House Speaker Todd Houston, who endorsed Pence's campaign. We spoke with Politico's Adam Wren, who was on the ground in Iowa to cover Pence's campaign launch. Pence uh, announced really focusing on a, on a Reagan-esque, sunny, optimistic vision for the country. Not something we've heard from a ton of the candidates so far. They've painted a very bleak picture, not so much a, a, a shining city on a hill, but sort of a dark post-apocalyptic landscape. Um, and so Pence really stood out uh, to me for how, you know, with both with his video and his announcement today uh, in, in Iowa, uh, with a really sunny version of where he wants to take the party and the country. Uh, give us some of the flavor there in Iowa from what you've seen in terms of others from Indiana making the trip, what you're hearing from those in Indiana politics about this new Pence campaign for president. Yeah, Speaker Todd Houston uh, was here. Uh, he came out. Uh, uh, there was also a bus of family, friends and supporters who traveled from Indianapolis very early this morning to be here. So even though Pence is not uh, announcing in Indiana, uh, you know, he did had have quite a lot of Hoosier flavor uh, at his announcement. And there in Iowa this past week. Now, we also got reaction from another In Focus panelist, former state lawmaker Mike Murphy, who also once served as chair of the Marion County GOP. Here's what he told me about the former vice president's speech. And I think the speech was not just Reagan-esque. I think it was Churchill-esque. He laid out a principled, conservative agenda for leadership, uh, not just here in the United States, of course, but worldwide. Um, I think the two most compelling moments were when he said that Donald Trump on January 6th made him choose between him and the Constitution. And he said, I chose the Constitution. The other compelling moment was when he talked about Ukraine and he said, Ukraine is not our war, but freedom is our fight. Clearly differentiated himself between the populists and the conservatives. And I think you'll see a resurgence of conservative principles under, under Pence. And the pretenders, the, the populist pretenders, will fade back into their caves. Did he take on the former president more directly than you had expected him to? He's kind of towed a difficult line trying to balance that here in recent months. Was it was it even more than you'd expected him to say? Exactly. It was much more than I expected. He's tried to balance respect for the president and their accomplishments by using you know words like reckless on January 6th. He went far beyond that today. He said again, 
the president made me choose between him and the Constitution. I chose the Constitution and several other times during the speech, he uh, emphasized the constitutional government will be his watchword. At that speech in Iowa, Speaker Todd Houston was there. He's endorsing Mike Pence. But for the most part, a number of big elected officials are still taking a somewhat hands-off approach to the primary. Do you expect to see more Indiana Republicans backing Pence's campaign for president as it moves along? Well, I think they are political creatures by nature, every one of them, including myself. Um, but I, I was impressed that uh, that Houston took that risk to come out there and be very, not just visible, but to be one of the introducers. I was impressed with that. A number of politicians, as we said there, have not yet made an endorsement, including Senator Mike Braun and others who are on the ballot next year. Now, across the aisle, we also got some reaction from Indiana Democratic Party Chair Mike Schmoll. Well, my first reaction is I wonder why he didn't do it in uh, Indiana, his home state, where he where he grew up and became governor. I think that that's a little curious, um, but I think that's my first reaction. I think my second one is um, he is going to have uh, some folks to contend with. And first and foremost is his former boss, <laughs> the former president, Donald Trump. And so he is really uh, kind of making history, challenging his former boss uh, for the nomination. I think that you're seeing a huge uh, split in the Republican Party on, you know, do they want to go with Trump again? A lot of people, probably a majority of people like Donald Trump in the Republican Party, or do they want to try uh, and go on another course? And so um, I've learned in politics uh, that it's it's impossible to predict the future. You have no idea where things are going. But but somebody like Mike Pence has a really, really big uphill climb. You were part of the presidential campaign cycle in 2020, working with Pete Buttigieg and his campaign. What's changed since 2020, in your view, about the electorate overall? You know, interestingly enough, Dan, I think that folks, um, there still is an anger out there. Um, I think it's anger, but I also think that there's some frustration. I think that um, I think that people see that gerrymandering, money in politics, um, just the tone of our politics really is does kind of take things to the basement, take thing takes things to the gutter. And so um, you see there's so much activity for primaries where people are trying to go really, really far right. Uh, and maybe in some other states, not quite Indiana, going really, really far left uh, to get a nomination. And they're not speaking to that middle chunk of, of Americans and in our case, Hoosiers. Democratic Chair Mike Schmoll there in our interview Thursday before the indictment news broke. Coming up next, we'll talk with our panel about Mike Pence's campaign launch and former President Trump's indictment next. And as many Hoosiers celebrate Pride Month, there's growing concern in the LGBTQ community with the human rights campaign declaring a state of emergency this week. We'll have a reaction straight ahead.